that. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I wish there was a sit mode. Hey, yeah, thanks for doing the portal. And if we could engage you to do that for every event, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, you thank you so much. Are you doing? Elijah. Hey, Elijah, it's oh. nice to have you back. We're it's really, nice to really... be here. Okay, well, it's Elijah, great to have you. Uh, it's my, really nice to see you guys. Um, yes. Welcome. Yes. Welcome, everyone. You just might want to tell Evelyn that. Okay, That's, okay yes. I'm just vibing. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Oh, shit, man. Where's my phone? You can't take a seat. You. You. Of course, we will introduce ourselves. But thanks. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no. Okay. We got this. Thank you. You don't know. Right? Okay. Triangle. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, what did you say? I just said we thought we'd just wait the time a little bit longer so that people can join. Yes. Because it's only like exactly. my clock is like nine thirty-two. Yes. <laughs> okay. If you guys want to wait a couple of minutes, like wait one or two minutes to start, why don't you ask everybody to come in front of the stage, and I'll take a picture of them. Everybody that's here. Oh yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Do you guys want to take a picture? Take a picture with us. Sure. Hello. Why not take it with the elephants? So if he, he stands close to the elephants, what about that? <laughs> but don't, but don't sit down in front of it. So not in front of it, but next to it. Yay. How okay, about that? That's perfect. Okay. So some okay. of you know the drill already. You're going to start doing emojis and you're not going to stop until I tell you. Okay? Okay. Start emojis. Start emojis. And it should be about five, four, three. Oh, you guys, I got the money shot. There we are. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, guys. It's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Hey, thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, oh, you guys, this is such a team effort. Isn't it awesome? We, <laughs> yes. Oh. Dang right. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. What do you think? Shall we start? Yes, let's get started. Okay. okay. Hello. So, Hi. welcome, everyone. I will mute you now um, so we don't hear any background noises. I just did. Oh, you did. Great. Perfect. All right, let's get All right, started. take it Hi away. and welcome. Can you hear us properly? Hi, and welcome yes. everyone. Yeah. Can you hear megaphone. us? Do you have megaphones? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, hello? Okay, hello, microphone hello. is working. Yeah. Is mine working too? Can you hear me well? Evelyn? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Perfect. Hi and welcome everyone to our little workshop to go beyond presenting how to stimulate interaction and creativity in, in all space VR. We are very happy and excited to be here with you today. So probably also given the corona pandemic, all space and other social VR platforms are becoming increasingly popular. I mean, after all, we are all social beings and like to get to get together and interact with each other. And a lot of people have phone calls and video calls these days to stay in touch with each other or even to replace traditional face-to-face -face classes because schools are closed. And of course, this is already so much better to have video from phone calls than to have no kind of communication and interaction. But let's be honest, it's also very limiting. In a video conference call with your class and your teacher feels really, really different than a normal one. You can't just quietly ask your neighbor a question or communicate with a specific person or group from the whole group. You have to interact with everyone at once or you kind of keep shy and, and quiet and don't ask that many questions. So the interactive part of it is actually quite low. So that's, that's a bit of a bummer. It can be, it's frustrating, yeah, it's a pity. But luckily you're already here with us. You're on the right path. You're here with us in Alt Space, and we are convinced that Alt Space offers a great opportunity to interact, engage, learn, and be creative with each other. And we want to show you hands on how you can do this and go beyond just presenting slides in Alt Space. So yes, this is what's going to be about today. And my name is Constanze Höpfner. I'm a student of educational science and technology, master student in the Netherlands. 
And I have investigated how you can measure immersion in a VR training for presentation skills, which you would present in front of a virtual audience. My team and I, we have come to the conclusion that to judge how real you are, the real the VR representation skills really feels, you have to compare the arousal level of your users between the real and the simulated presentation by measuring heart rate, skin conductance, and anxiety levels with questionnaires. So ever since I'm really interested in VR presentation um, and VR in general for educational purposes, so um, I'm really happy that I'm here today and can learn more about students in VR with you today and also give this little workshop. And I've also worked as the chairperson of my study association and organized my workshops, professional and professional development of students. But as you can see, I'm reading all around. I have the lovely Evelyn with me here today. So Evelyn, can you tell us a bit more about yourself, please? Thanks. Hey, uh, welcome and thank you for joining Constance and me. Um, I'm Evelyn Ido and I have a Bachelor of Science in Psychology and I'm currently working on my dissertation about assessment in VR for my Master Educational Science and Technology. I do a lot of other things, so if you want to know more about that, check out my LinkedIn. For example, I train employees their basic pedagogical and presentational skills and I also am a VR training expert. So that, that's enough about me, you can find me on LinkedIn if you want to know more. Yes. Perfect, thank you. Sure, add us on LinkedIn if you want to learn more about us. So let's get started. I mean, we've already been using it, a really nice and easy way to interact with each other. And yes, I'm going to adapt my microphone level even more. Can you hear me better now? Everyone can hear me fine? Um, so, how to interact with people? You can use the emoticons, of course, to interact with people. So you can ask them a general questions like we did when we took the photo, hey, just give us any kind of emoticon. But you can also ask people to give you a specific emoticon for a specific answer. So you can find the emoticon. I mean, you know it. On the bottom left in your menu, when you click on the emoticon button, then all sorts of emoticons will pop up. So we would like to get to know you better. So can you just please give us different emoticons depending on your answer? So from all the students, please give us hearts so that we can see who are the students among us. Cool, and then, yes, uh, smiley faces if you're a teacher. Nice, see some teachers there. And then, oh, sorry, clapping hands if you're a teacher. And smiley faces if you're just here because, well, you're just a VR fan. Nice, see, and, and please take a look around to see what everyone else responds. Brilliant, thank you so much. Cool. Yeah, so this is a really nice and easy way, for instance, also for people that are quite new to, to Altspace, to just get them to, to get to know Altspace and interact in an easy, nice way. And people don't have to, you know, talk yet, which is good for people with social anxieties. And it's also good you know, for shy people and just if you don't want people talking over each other all the time. Next, please. Yes. So what you can also do is to ask people to respond to a statement or a question by, by positioning themselves. So my statement is, I believe that by 2021, we all will be included in my standard regular education. So I'd like to ask everyone, hey, please, if you think, yes, this is true, please move to the left. And if you think this is not true, please move to the right. Cool. Yeah, we've got some enthusiasts here. Very good. Yep, I'm also going to move this way because I think, yes, VR will become increasingly used. Nice. Thank you. So, <coughs> again, this is a really nice and easy way to get people engaged, to get them to use the tool, so to use the function to walk around with the avatar. Very nice and easy to get an answer. Also, very, very good overview. You don't have to ask people to you know, respond out one after the other, but you can have all responses at once and a really nice overview. So, perfect. Let's move on to the next slide. So, another way to do this is to ask people to position themselves again, but on a scale function. So, my statement now is, um, VR has been used in my curriculum already. So, if it has never been used for you, please move to the one side. If it has been used once to the middle, and if it has been used more than once for you, all the way to the left. Unfortunately for me, it hasn't been used. Really curious. For you? Yeah, okay. Nice. 
Good to see that quite some people have used it already in the curriculum. Nice. Cool. So again, this is a really nice and easy way to get people to answer, to get them engaged, to actively participate in your kind of presentation or meeting or whatever you do. And always don't forget to look around to see what people actually do. I, I remember that I kind of forgot that, of course, I can move around my head and, and see what everyone else says. So this is especially good for novices too, to all space. Thank you. Next. And of course, you can also use this to answer multiple choice questions. So for instance, yeah, you would have a question and then you have four answers and people line up in front of the respective answer. And this is also great when you then want to split up groups and um, have people working together that give the same answers or even opposing answers. So this is a really nice and easy way to get people engaged and interactive when responding to your answer, to your question. Okay, and then the best thing about Allspace, I think, really is the spatialized audio. So what does it mean? Well, it's just like in a normal big room, you uh, have the opportunity to walk around and when you're far apart from each other, you can't hear your voices so well. Right now I'm presenting, so I'm using the amplifier in my voice, the megaphone, so everyone can hear me quite well and loud, but if it wasn't for that, people in the back would actually not hear me that well. But you can use this in your advantage. You can make it so that people get to know each other. You can split up in small groups, you can have group discussions, and you could have virtual walk-in and drop-in hours. So you could have the teacher being in the front, for instance, and people working in different groups in different areas of the event space. And if they're far apart from each other enough, then they won't be able to hear each other. But if they have questions or if they needed help, they can walk to each other and just help each other out. So this is a really, really handy tool to allow for flexible assistance. And here you can see a photo of us, actually, <laughs> for a educators of the R research team meet up and uh, we had this lovely big space and we split up into small groups to get to know each other and have really good um, interactions, really good conversations and really the chance to get to know people from this huge group of participants in a good, nice way in a small group. So that was, that was awesome. And yeah, just a little reminder, the little elephant you can see here is just an example of objects you can place in event rooms. Isn't it cute? animated it's lovely isn't it so this can really help you to spark creativity also so you can use a variety you can hold you can put a whole zoo into an event space and this is great for language learning if you want to ask your students to describe the object this is great if you just want people to for instance come up with stories uh, in, in which you want to make them use specific words or specific objects so this can be used in many different ways and it can even be used for a treasure hunt i mean we place this elephant in the room really nicely on the stage, but you can also hide it a little bit better and then use labels and make people solve little, little riddles and so on. So this is a really nice way to spark your creativity by the means of objects. And I can tell you there's so many different objects. It's, it's amazing. It's really cool. So it's a nice and inspiring way to use objects. And now we'd like you to use the spatial audio with us. So we're going to split this group depending on what your preferred color is. So everyone who likes blue, please feel free to join me. And everyone who likes orange, please feel free to join Evelyn. Yes. So we're just going to move to different places in, the, in this uh, event room and try out the spatial audio. So please, everyone in the blue team, just follow me to the back to the bar. And the orange team, yes. please follow Evelyn. Yeah. All right. So, as you guys can hear, or can't hear actually, um, you can't hear Constance talking and hear a team talking, which is great, because now we can have the discussions over here, while they are talking about something else. Um, of course, we can do the same in other groups or in bias or whatever you prefer, but the spatial audio works, works great in all space. So in a while, we could go back together um, and we can discuss what we, we found, you know, or we can have a group discussion with the whole group again. Um, so these, these little features are great uh, in our space and we still feel like we're connected to each other, even though we can't hear each other. I mean, with Zoom meetings, you can sometimes get in different rooms with these webinar tools, but then you're really closed off 
to each other. And, and now I can just walk over to people and stand and ask for something. Or maybe <laughs> if I want to start to dive into a bit more, I can ask them, hey, come for me, we can go somewhere <laughs> and talk to the other seniors. <laughs> Which is great. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So, do you have your guides already used for spatial audio option in Outspace, for event? Yeah? Oh, you, you're also muted. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, so now you can unmute yourself. Sorry, I <laughs> forgot to turn off the mute. <laughs> hey, nice to meet you. So who has used the spatial audio? No, Yeah? Oh, can you tell me a little bit about it? I record my statement. <laughs> you record your statement? <laughs> 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 well, you're using it right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 right. Um, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I can hear you, Yvonne, but can you? I didn't know if oh, um, yeah. Constance yeah. had her megaphone on. Yeah, she has. I, Let me check her. I couldn't hear her when she was on stage, so I just wanted to. I'm glad you said that. Oh, okay. I text me if something like that happens. Um, So it's really cool because I can send Constance a message now. But not, um, not she's texting also, so like if you interact. want to yeah. uh, <laughs> send somebody a personal message, all right, guys, let's get back to the stage. I think we all now know how the spatial audio works. Very cool. All right. No, sorry, but I will mute you all again now. <coughs> yep. All right, um, Connie, I hear that some people were struggling um, hearing you, so maybe you can hire your uh, volume a bit. She has to sometimes rejoin um, because of the internet connection, but she will be here shortly. But we can just go on with the presentation. So I really uh, hope you enjoyed that little <laughs> exercise and um, don't hesitate to use this also when you are, are having discussions with uh, fellow students or when you're a teacher to create discussions with students. Um, I really like this. Uh, all right, now uh, I will present a bit of theory, but that doesn't mean that I can't interact with my audience. Uh, as you all know, you can throw up emoticons to communicate with me. You have learned that now. But there's also a raise hand um, button option, so I will activate it right now. So in your bottom right of your, your own screen, you will see the raise hand button, as the same as this, this little picture next to me. And you can click on that button, and I will get a notification that somebody wants to ask a question, or at least has raised their hand. Um, so somebody clicked it already. Uh, Tony clicked it. <laughs> Don't be shy. <laughs> we're, we're just testing this out. Can somebody click it? Yes, great. Okay, Tony, um, now you get a message that I have provided you with megaphone. So if you could say hi now. Hey, guys. Yeah, now everybody can hear you and you Ooh, could ask okay. a question in theory. <laughs> Thank you for being, being guinea pig for me. Um, of yeah, thanks. And so now I can toggle Tony off again. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's how that works. So if you guys have any questions during my little um, tiny bit of uh, theory, then you can click the, the raise hand button. Um, and you can always unraise your hand um, if you don't have a question anymore. That's also good to know. We don't have much time, so we won't answer that many questions. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. Um, 
If you want to know more, by the way, or you want to know the sources behind the, these claims, don't hesitate to contact us after the event, but there's not enough time to go over it all. Uh, so first up, you see motivation. You can find a ton of research that proves students feel more motivated uh, when learning with VR or in VR. To quote Makransky, Bore, Guide and Meyer, a study from 2019, students who receive safety training in VR environments tended to give higher ratings of enjoyment than those who learned in, with conventional media. And furthermore, students who learned in VR showed a more positive pretest to post that changes in their intrinsic motivation. Now, you can find a lot of, a lot of uh, research about this. Um, there are tons of studies who, who have proven that VR reduces motivation. Secondly, we have long-term retention. Although no effect of VR is observed on short-term retention, um, VR was found to have significant effect on long-term long retention, which is pretty interesting. So results show that students scored and remembered better um, in VR conditions, even after four weeks compared to watching a video and then remembering um, the stuff they learned. Um, also, tons of research that proved that. Thirdly, deeper learning. Um, VR can simulate real life situations or add things to situations that make students more engaged and help them learn. For example, the ability to view 3D objects like this little elephant. Um, you can walk around the elephant, you can get multiple viewpoints, you can make it larger, you can make it smaller, you can put it up in the air. Well, this really helps when students are actively constructing new knowledge about stuff. Uh, I mean, an elephant you all know, but you can put more difficult objects uh, in the space, for example, a small model of the COVID-19 virus, to name an example. So this really stimulates deeper learning more, um, especially compared to a classroom setting where you can't do these things. Next up, we have creativity and creativity can be learned and is highly correlated to problem solving. So maybe that comes as a surprise for you, but if you think you are not creative, you can still learn to be. Um, uh, Klaxon and Hiso um, have done some research about it and it's really interesting, but I will just uh, give you a little tiny teaser about it. So the imagination aspect of VR promotes learnings in developing problem solving capacity, especially for open-ended problems. And next to that, uh, to name another example, you can use creative visualization, which is a technique you can use for helping learners to develop imagination in what they want to learn in VR environments. So if you're interested in learning more about that, please message me and I can send you some interesting stuff about that. Lastly, we have uh, social benefits. Uh, think about cooperative or collaborative learning. So VR offers a great potential for social scaffolding. With the use of FDR, students can work together, like you just uh, saw in these little groups. And they are aware of each other more because you can look around at your fellow students, especially when you are in VR. Um, and you share a common learning environment. You can develop social skills, you can solve problems together. This is all possible in a classroom also, but in VR you can do it in a simulated, more motivating environment, um, if you want. You can meet wherever you want, basically. Um, next to this, it's, it's interesting to note that VR can be used for simulating access to limited resources, where, I mean, uh, with resource, resources, um, anything which is in high demand or in limited supply. And right now, during the COVID virus, um, being together in a classroom is limited, is a limited resource. So um, it might be an interesting substitute for that right now. All right. Um, has anybody got a question uh, so far? Uh, can you raise your hand again? Because there were a lot of uh, hands raised, raised, but before that, okay, correct. Go on. Uh, my question is just with the social benefits, has anyone did a study to see whether just using your computer on 2D in all space had any difference in engagement compared to if we're in all space with a VR headset? Specifically on all space, I haven't found many studies uh, actually, but you could look up um, some studies that um, look at other social platforms. Um, I haven't found, uh, basically I'm not really specifically looking at this with my study, so I haven't done a deep dive into it. 
Um, but as you can imagine, VR promotes more immersion. Um, you can find studies about VR and immersion, um, which could also promote a uh, feeling of social closeness more than when you look at people in 2D. So if you are interested in that, I would uh, look for studies about immersion, 2D compared to VR, social immersion. It's indeed a very, very interesting question, and I think it might even yeah. be worthwhile investigating right now. I mean, this is great, great idea. Yeah, no, I'm curious what you guys think about it yourself. Maybe you can chat about it after the, the workshop a little bit more. Thanks for your question. All right. Um, next, we also have some challenges, of course, with VR. Um, so the true power of VR for education will not come from replicating existing education, like copying your presentations um, into VR or just do multiple choice testing in VR but from using VR to do things that add something that couldn't be done without it. There is where the true power of VR lies. And currently that's not really happening. And I encourage you all students, teachers or whatever to, uh, to try and do that, to try and be creative with VR. Next that we have platforms like Allspace, these platforms are not near perfect. It's a work in progress. And furthermore, VR, of course, asks for a lot of resources, for example, money to buy equipment, you need a stable internet connection, you need enough space, you name it. Um, and these resources are often seen as an obstacle when wanting to use VR for education. But it, uh, it's a long-term investment, so think about that as well. And lastly, going out of the comfort zone is hard, and this is especially the case when you learn how to use new technology. And like we demonstrated, a lot is possible, uh, but you have to learn how to do it. And you have to learn how to work with the hardware and software. So I have some super nice examples for you guys uh, about what people are already doing in VR. The first example is the example of Dr. Star. <laughs> uh, he goes by the name of Dr. Star. I don't know if he's really called Dr. Star. Um, but with VR, you can basically go on virtual field trips to wherever you want to go. This is really fun. For example, as you can see here, uh, Dr. Star created the solar system world here in Allspace, um, featuring an MRE model, a model of the universe. Um, he made this world public, so you can visit it if you, if you want. Um, and uh, you can check out the universe. It's really, uh, it's really interesting. Another example, is uh, the example of Tim Jackson. Tim was so kind to let me observe his lessons in uh, Allspace VR. Um, so his students had to present their final projects about the course about biological inspired robots. So they all presented their findings in a private room in Allspace, uh, which means that only the teacher and the students could join the session. So I asked them about their opinions about presenting in Allspace VR, and they all liked it. Even the ones who were fearful of presenting found it more comfortable. And the ones who liked presenting in, in real life were totally fine with it as well. Tim is also hosting an event during the Students in VR conference, so check that out as well. And another example is an ex the example of the COVID-19 model. So this shows you a low poly version of the COVID-19 virus. You can import models into Allspace and show your students around, or as a student, you can get creative by importing stuff to show your teachers or fellow students. So that is really funny. And lastly, we have an example of Laura van Fotse. She created this highly educational world full of information about cashiers. So this picture is taken of a cave I discovered after exploring, after exploring all the interesting informational signs pictures, and there was even a video about glaciers. Um, so this world is mostly made with the Allspace world building kit, the same kit I used to put the elephant in. Um, you don't have to install anything difficult. Everybody can use this in Allspace. You can create uh, wherever, whatever world you want, and you can just spawn in objects like polar bears, water, ice, clouds, flowers, elephants, whatever you can think of. It's almost without limitation, so you can let your creativity flow. Um, so that, that's really interesting thing. Yeah, so th these were some examples. There are many, many more examples. Uh, it's really cool. I really highly encourage you to um, explore the worlds of Allspace and uh, see for yourself what you can create or what others have created. 
All right. We have something uh, other to tell you. And this is going to be a, a bit challenging, so uh, stay with me. Um, I am now going to send you a link to a survey. And I don't know if you're a teacher or a student who already uses surveys. You can use surveys, for example, to check if your students trust whatever information you um, explain to them or to check out um, how they feel. Um, yes, they can so, do that test. After yeah. That lecture to see if they've learned enough. So, so now, yeah. Yeah, you can open the link. So we all sent you a message now. You can open the link and we created a really short Google Forms. So yeah, just, just an example. What's possible here. And you can scroll when you use G2D with just your mouse and then scroll down the bar on the right. Or with your thumbstick if you're using a VR headset. And yes, it's just a Google Form and you can have different kind of question scales, multiple choice again. You can even put in open or ended questions and people can just fill it in while they're here in all space. So they don't have to switch off and wait on an email for you to send them. Or nothing like that. You can choose this right here, right now in a really nice and easy way. And we also know that, for instance, people use it for their master thesis to conduct their studies, to collect data. So you can use all this in all space. And of course, you could also choose to just share other kind of information. You don't have to share a survey per se. You could also just share a website with other information or with, with images, whatever you would like to. So that's really nice and easy way to use information during a presentation or an all space event in general. And as Evelyn has now put up, you can also then share your screen. If you're the teacher and you created a survey, for instance, you can straight away share the results with everyone. Okay. So, is this working for all of you? Can you give us some emoticons if you've been able to open up the link? Yes, that looks good. Nice. Perfect. Yes, and then right away you can share the results with us. So this can, again, spark discussions get people engaged. Very nice. So perfect. So. Okay. Shall we move on to the next slide then? Hello, can everyone hear me? Perfect. No, not very well. Not very well, okay, I'm trying to increase my volume. Is it any better now? Yeah, I hope you guys can all see the screen sharing. Um, of course, if you can't figure out the All right, let's go share. All right, Evelyn had to rejoin this room because she had some technical problems. She's going to be right with us. Yes, there she hey. is again. Nice. I Hello again. <laughs> so I hope you guys could all see that I was sharing my screen. I mean, if I share my screen and open Altspace and open my DEX, uh, my internet connection is not good enough. But I hope you I, guys could all see it. So you can uh, use these surveys and get live responses on your screen, which is pretty cool. Uh, I use WebRTX. Um, uh, do you guys all see the slides back again? I, I tried to put them up again. Can you give me some hearts if you see the slides or any other emoticons? Ah, perfect. So it does work. So if you 
if you can't see the slides, uh, you can just uh, try and re-enter the room, but I already got a message that it is working for everyone now. That's great. Um, I actually never tried the web, uh, the screen sharing for an audience, and actually it works pretty well. Um, it's also pretty doable to go from screen sharing to your presentation. Um, so if you are interested in that, I would practice and try it out with your students. Of course, you can share your screen for multiple other reasons as well. Uh, yeah. So let's go to let's get to the summary. Yes. Thank you, Evelyn. So what have we been showing you today? Well, we showed you that you can use emoticons to give answers to interact with your audience. Very clear, very easy. But you can also differentiate by asking them to respond with different emoticons. So that's maybe an idea that not all of you use. Also, you can ask questions and let people position themselves according to their answers, which makes it nice and easy to split people into groups. Then you can use the spatialized audio to allow for people getting to know each other in smaller groups, to allow for group discussions or even virtual drop-in hours in a really nice and easy way without having to switch between breakout rooms such and such you have like which you have to in some sort of video conference calls that I know. So you have the power to just move to a different area of the room and you can just move around and ask people for help if needed, which you can't really do in video conference calls. You're kind of limited. And then also you can let people, of course, raise their hands to allow for a little bit of organized communication so that people don't you know, talk for each other, but they can still interact with each other in a nice way. You can use surveys and you can share screens and surveys and share screens are such a versatile tool. You can use them in so many different ways. So they open up a whole new level of interaction in all space and it takes a little practice, but you can just practice with on your own with using an event space. And once you start the hang of it, it's really nice and easy to use during your classes, during your meetings. So these are some interaction ways for you. And now everyone is going to summarize real quick how to start. Yes. So of course these, these ways of interacting are the ways we came up with, but there are many more um, and I highly encourage you to be creative with this um, and go think out of the box and come up with more ways to interact and maybe share them with us uh, after um, the summary, uh, summary um, by raising your hands. So next up we also um, talked about how to stimulate creativity, for example by going on virtual field trips. Um, by importing assets like the COVID world um, or putting in uh, elephants. <laughs> um, yeah, you can also build your own reels. This is really fun to do. It's really relaxing, I think. Um, but you can also think about um, letting your students create a world around a certain topic you want them to learn. Or as a student, create a world about something you want to present to your fellow students or teachers and walk them through it, literally. Um, next up, problem solving in VR is something that is really fun to do together or alone, let alone um, think about building a world um, to figure out how that world uh, has to be built. That takes a lot of problem solving and creative thinking. Um, so it's a great platform to stimulate uh, creativity. So definitely let's stay in touch. Um, we have some time left for questions or suggestions or whatever, uh, but you can find us on LinkedIn and these are our email addresses if you want to have some background information or just chat to us and don't hesitate to do so. So yeah, don't hesitate to get in touch and let us know how you use interactive ways or how you inspire people in all space. We'd love to hear it from you also. We thought of these things, yeah. but we're sure you and also have great examples. Yes. So we have some time left for questions or suggestions or whatever you want to share. So you can click on the raise right hand button and I can give you the megaphone. Um, yeah, Andrew. Here you go. Here we go. Hi, actually it was in the talk. I was hoping that you could talk, talk more about how to share the screen. Um, you said it was possible. Where is that tool? Yes. Uh, I can go back a little bit. So the tool is called WebRTC. Um, if you just take a note of that, or remember that you can easily Google it. It's a super easy to use tool. You can install it as a plugin um, on Google Chrome. 
Um, and then you just click the play button and it provides you with a link um, which links you to shared screen. And I put a link into the browser thingy underneath my slides. Um, you can see that if you are hosting a room. And that's it. That's it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, so try it out. Uh, if it's not working, please send me an email and I can help you out a little bit. But it's really easy. I was surprised that it was this easy. For sure. Great question. All right. Um, any other questions? Yes, Henshi? I don't know if you pronounced Hello. your name right. Hey. Yeah. It's okay. Um, my uh, question actually, or actually comment, uh, I revoked my statement from my revoked statement. I guess I do have experience in spatial audio. And uh, so ah. far, this is, I see a kind of a hindrance because it was very difficult to hear you guys. And it just didn't make sense because we kept trying to get closer to the stage so we could hear you better, but for some reason we can hear you like from here and then the, the audio will change and then it will come to over here. Uh, I don't know if anybody else had that or it's just a personal problem, really? but I think that could be kind of a hindrance. Also, That's another weird. hindrance in this, uh, don't want to be a wet blanket, but there's another hindrance with this. I wish this was back when I was homeschooled, but uh, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's more of an elite thing right now. Uh, it's more, for, yes. you know, this would work very well in pr private schools, you know, but in public schools, it'd be very hard pressed to get the government to sign off on this. I remember back when I was in school, we even got those old Macintoshes that had a, what he called Oregon Trail on it. <laughs> those were like five years behind. But I can see that in an educational stand, this could be in a good private educational tool, but as a public educational tool, I think it's way and it's, you know, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> baby step or baby stages. There you go. So, For sure. Yes, we are also pioneers. <laughs> you are so right about that. Like I said, it costs a lot of resources um, to even do this. And some people don't even have full internet connection yet. I mean, we are definitely not there at all. We are all pioneers, um, especially the ones who are already here in the Trail yeah. joke? Yeah. <laughs> but it's a great comment. Yes, and we are we are now setting the first baby steps into the right direction, I guess. Um, but yeah, great comment. Keep that in mind as well. All right. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for your question. Thank you for being here. So, has anybody else has a question about what we just talked about or wants to add something, share an experience there themselves? Have you built your own world, for example, or have you used VR um, before in a classroom setting or whatever? Or have you used objects and event spaces yet? I mean, we have a little... Yeah. I'm sure <laughs> people have found other nice objects too. Anyone ever used any? Maybe for Keith. one. You, you are a megaphone campman. Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, okay, raise your hand again. <laughs> well, if you have a question, you can type it to me. <laughs> yes, type it. If you want. <laughs> So in the meantime, if anybody else has a, has a question, then please raise your hand. Raise your hand or send us a message, whatever you feel like, actually, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right? <laughs> all possible. Yeah. Ah, okay. So Keith tells us that he was going to remind everybody that this platform is totally free. And that's a great comment, of course. I mean, you have to, to buy the VR headset. Um, but if you are in 2D, for example, the, the whole platform is free to download and free to use. I mean, we are organizing a whole conference in here um, and the platform uh, doesn't charge it. And you can organize lessons in here with, without charge. I mean, it, it's really cool. You can just hop in and create whatever you like. So yeah, that's a great comment. Yes, it's not, not something to skip over. Yes, and I think I'm also using 2D right now at the moment, for instance, and I know that, for instance, in Germany, students have more and more access to at least these laptops in school. So I think 
Well, we're not there yet. That's absolutely fine. The comment has been made before, but I think Allspace is a great opportunity for free VR usage, even for 2D users. So I think there's some, some potential at least, and um, yeah, I think baby steps taken in the right direction. So that's that's great, and that's it's free. So that's that's awesome. It's great to get together in these tough times in this way. <laughs> It, it's really interesting to see um, your, your volume of your microphone is pretty low and I see people coming closer <laughs> to, uh, to hear you a little bit more Oh, I'm so uh, sorry, curious, I, I don't guess. know. I'm just going to repeat, I just said... The special audio, I'm... man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately it's not working too well today, but well. <laughs> Yeah, I just said that at least um, some more students get access to using laptops in school and then they can use a 2D version of Altspace for free. So at least they can participate in some sort of way without having to buy expensive VR headsets and they can still mm -hmm. use this to socialize, to interact with each other. So I think it's a baby step in the right direction and hopefully it will get more attention by everyone. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we have another question from Tigran. Here you go, you can unmute yourself. Yes, yes. Okay, hi everyone. I would like to know, uh, does Allspace VR allow us to uh, customize our environment? So can we add something or delay something from the basic? That's a good question. Um, there are some things you can uh, delete from the basic rooms. For example, uh, on this stage, there was a microphone stand and a microphone on it. Um, so we deleted them and there was um, a whole block of seats in here. But for example, the couches or the lunch things you see behind you, they can be deleted or the, the bar. You know, this, this template uh, is pretty limited. But you can build your own template and you can change whatever you want about that. You can build it with a world editor, but you can also be a little bit more technical and try Unity, um, which is also not that difficult, but you know, it's, it's a next step. And from, but from these um, templates, uh, as you can call it, um, you, you can't change that much. You can add stuff and remove a little bit, but not too much. Mm -hmm. some tools and not be uh, things but tools which can help me to do my presentation um, by tools you mean a screen or what, what do you mean uh, for example pen pencil or something like a blackbird uh, can you repeat that uh, by saying tool i mean pen pencil or blackbird which ah. can help me to do the presentation better? Uh, there are some tools. Let me see if I can spot. I'm silly, but we have a, oh, a laser pointer over here. It's easier to use in VR. As you can see over here, I have a laser pointer. <laughs> so that can come in handy. Um, if you want to try it out, actually. Um, yeah. Is there something which will help you to write? And there is a pen tool in all space, but it's not great. So you can use, for example, your the share your screen and type stuff uh, in there. Um, uh, I don't think because you're the audience, you can't use. That. Use the pointer. I'm sorry, but I could give you right to, to present, um, uh, and then you would be able to join it to use it. But there, there aren't uh, great pen tools. But we've been using in the um, students in VR or in the researchers team for education. We have been using the share screen and then typing the the, Google Docs. Uh, uh, Outspace VR is free. Where is the business model? I don't know, actually. <laughs> I guess getting the platform really popular um, could be a strategy. I have no clue. <laughs> I'm not uh, into business that much. <laughs> you can time here. That's why I'm, I have a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
That point now it's free. So <laughs> anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for your question. Of course, um, you have other platforms as well. I mean, Altspace is one platform, and we just talked about Altspace, but um, have you heard about Engage? Oh, shit, you're muted. So let me give you the megaphone again. Yep, there you go. Have you heard of the platform Engage? Uh, sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Can you repeat, please? There are other platforms as well, for example, Engage. Have you heard of that platform? Which platform, sorry? Engage. Engage, no, no. So that's Not also a, mm, yeah, well, no, it's different. It's more um, photorealistic, I would say, and it's, it has a little bit more of a serious feeling to it. Um, and there you can use the pen tools. You could Google that platform as well. It's not totally free to use anymore, but it's relatively cheap. So that would be an interesting option for you as well, maybe. It also allows me to connect it 2D and Yes. Well, I don't know, but you can connect it to your uh, laptop through 2D or in VR. Yeah. It kind of works the same as Allspace, yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you very much for your help. Yeah. Of course, no problem. So, um, if there is another question, please let me know. If not, then I would really um, want to thank you for your attention and thank you, Connie, for making this awesome presentation with me. I really had a lot of fun working together with you. Fellow Thank students, you, you did a you great all job. Thank you for being here with us today. Thanks, Evelyn, for this great presentation as well. Thanks for being Thank here you. with us today, and we hope you learned something new. You can try those things by yourself, and get in touch with us if you have any more questions. If you want to know more about the literature, you can find us on LinkedIn or email us. And we hope you have a yes. great rest of your day. <laughs> yeah, enjoy your day. If everybody can um, give uh, a new megaphone myself up there. Um, if everybody could just give a big round of applause for this very, very interactive, very original presentation. Um, one of the most creative ones I know I've been to here in Alt Space. It was awesome. Thank you guys so much. You guys did a fantastic job. I learned so much, and I'm always in VR. So it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing, you guys. Um, Thanks to all from, we, from Alt Space for support. Yeah, well, and, and we appreciate everybody coming here to learn more so that we can get more, more users and more people engaged. So you guys really help move VR forward by, by showing so many more skills for, for everybody here. I wanted to let you guys know that we have a, a volunteer in the audience in a, in a bit, Elijah, who's going to spawn a portal for us to get to our next talk. And I don't know if Craig is still in here. He probably already, Craig, are you still in here? Um, Craig is going to um, have his two mentors. Uh, uh, Evelyn was a, a mentor for Connie, and Craig is a mentor for two students that will be talking about how VR helped um, in education, but also in how to deal with fear of heights. And I know I'm way up here right now, and people hang from rafters and they fall. And so I'm really interested to know how, what, how people are going to be interacting with their fear of heights in the very next talk. I'm going to look to, um, I think, uh, Elijah, can you spawn that now? Um, we'll let you spawn it now. We can do it like three minutes before, so we might have to wait two minutes. I'm going to unmute so that we can all, I'm going to unmute you all so you guys can also chat with each other yeah. while oh. Elijah, El yes, yeah. it's 20. We got two minutes. If you guys wanted to chat and share um, and come up and meet your wonderful presenters in person, um, or pet the elephant, and in two minutes, Elijah will will spawn the portal for our very next event. Let me check. Another speaker series. It is the acrophobia. I only came during like the last.
Yeah. I'm gonna jump. The next talk is gonna be about the weird from falling from big heights in VR. It's sorry. Have that. How's your day? Oh, you do. It's called the. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we are. Good morning for me. So. Yeah. Okay. So are we ready to go there? You go ahead. Some student. It won't let me spawn a portal after the game starts. They look so professional up on the screen. Look at them. Thank you for asking us with the girlfriend. Constance. This is so weird that I can now spawn a portal. My name's in the last year. When I was in the last year, I didn't have this problem. A what? Duck face, you get it. Okay. Sorry, uh, if you're both talking, I really should. A duck face? Okay, yeah. so we're yeah. 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 The duck face okay. where you yeah. stick your lips out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you guys got it. What about it? Is. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. That would be so That's bad. Awesome, Elijah. Please, everybody, click it. Everybody ready to spawn? Go ahead and click it, and they'll take us over to the next spot. The yeah. portal. Okay, and your guys. Okay, I was clicking. Hey, got eight. Click it now. Click um, it now. Anybody else want to come? Anybody else wanna come? Are we good? With okay, the they can they can enter later. Uh, All right. Here we go. Ready? All right, but I feel very. I'll say bye. Okay, thank Windows. you. Confirm everybody. Oh, oh. <laughs> I guess I didn't confirm. Evelyn, <laughs> I guess I didn't confirm. You guys did such a fantastic job. You guys just really did great. That was amazing. And so yeah, I hope you guys will be able to join yeah, us for the rest of the time. But like, wow, just wow. I mean, um, <laughs> you guys were really, really great. I cannot oh, even. Purple. So I'm, I'm going to run to the next one. I just wanted to say what a fabulous job thank you guys you. did. And thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of it. You guys are great. OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run to the next. To the next thing. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> There's a portal. There's a portal right there. Oh, wait. See y'all later.